Hey everybody, Model Man here, and I'm on the bench for July 2015. You're going to have to head over to Gears McTinker some to see some of this. This is a full, totally accurate, full-scale X-Wing helmet. Since I have the car, I figure I may as well have the helmet and the suit, and I'm going for my Rebel Legion membership. Along with the helmet, you got to get a lot of great vinyl cutouts here, but... I'll be doing a build-up of that over the coming weeks or months over on Gears McTinkerson. But along with the helmet, hey, hey, it's the skins. So everyone following over at Gears McTinkerson would have seen that I use skin snaps to put these skins on, and they aren't actually attached to the wooden frame. Rather, they slot in at three points like this, so I can take the entire front or back half off, and that is... a critically useful feature when you're building and later on needing to do maintenance on these. And over here in the paint booth, what is all this fine filigree work here? These are actually all of the elements needed to fill in the panels back here again. And you can see that I've got the uh, white outer skin on right now and this is roughly in place, not quite. Now essentially what will happen is that all of the other pieces will go back on here and there will be the slightest aluminum outline all around the edges. It's going to look nice. All of the outer skins have been painted. All of the inner skins, such as these guys here, need to go. However, I've run out of my primary color, which is Rust-Oleum Satin White, is a very common one that's used. Though, in this case, I also used Rust-Oleum's Clean Metal Primer clean white metal primer to do the base coats. So now I got to get all of these out of here and get those underway. And so what would those skins look like if they were just attached? Wow, nice. There's a lot of work on the uh, panels to get those to fit. That's going to look real sweet. <laughs> It's amazing how quickly this has started to come to life. Elsewhere, the Jupiter over here is protected from dust by having the notes all laid out. There is one big complication I may have hit the last time I worked on this and it set me back really bad. There should be a paint booth update coming up soon. This thing has definitely been getting a lot of use recently. With One critical thing I absolutely need to do very soon is get a filter to put over that hole up there because what's happening is over time all the dust and paint particles are attaching to the blades. They chip off easy enough, that's not an issue. However, they're definitely going to be throwing the balance off, slowing it down and causing performance issues that could be very bad. And I may finally have a solution for this mess. Any wrong move and all 20 feet of each of these will fly out and go crazy. Two options are to cut it down so it specifically fits, in which case if I move the booth somewhere else later in the future, it won't reach. Or B, some kind of better containment system than you see going on here. And over here on that most recent pseudo-annual charity auction at the end of June, the totals are in just under $225 by a few pennies. We'll add it up as we go here. And paying off first is the Doctors Without Borders with $26.36.46. That will bring their grand total Let's see, Doctors Without Borders, 31 and 46 will be $77. I want to get everybody into this $100 column as soon as I can, start some new organizations, and then continue building them all up to meet these levels. So that will bring Doctors Without Borders up to $77. And continue. Donate with existing PayPal account. I'd like to make my donation to be delivered to the benefiting nonprofits as soon as possible by waiving my right to a refund. Check. Submit. Let's try that again.
Uh, it seems to have gone through, but well, we'll see. So the harp seals for 2075 total. Continue. Check. Submit. Cannot be completed and agreement cancelled. Please use alternative method. Try again. And yet, the total amount due keeps getting reduced. Well, let's get UCP. It's $5. So that brings UCP up to 101.23. And the harp seals, 2075 to bring that to 95, 97, 77. Heading over to the Sharon S. Richard Community Hospice for 55, 65, 67 bucks pretty much. Check, submit. That was 65, which brings that up to 98. Close. 87 due. So at this point, it should be all the World Food Program, which I gave a crash course to essentially. Let's check those and head back to the first page. Everything's checked for $87 to them, which will bring the World Food Program to $97. So several just made it up to under 100 bucks, which is great. One recent thing I learned is that a light of sunshine here is still a charity, but it's not available through eBay as of this last auction. I'll check again as time goes on, but they may have to be moved into a different category. And continue. Yes. Check. Submit. Currently, I don't have donations due. Donation history. Let's see what that says now. Year to date, 224. Payment in process. So I'll check back in a couple days and make sure that this is all gone through. That looks like everything. Thanks for watching. See ya. And fresh from the Starship Modeler store, it's the 124 scale Logicoma from Wave. And brand new in, I'll be having a review of the Darth Hare X-Wing Helmet Kit. I got some videos coming up 
for August, and stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. See ya. And here are a few YouTube channels that might interest you. As always, the Scale Model Addict. Scott Vervan brings you his own work, and the Scale Model Addict Forum and Scale Model Addict Magazine. Dr. Faust's The Painting Clinic. Check out Tony for miniatures and model painting. What time is it? It's Cranky Time. With his lab rat Tori assistant Igor, Dr. Cranky brings you the best in rats, rods, and rust. Steve Neal's Garage with Rosie the Wonder Dog, Mary, and Xena, featuring feature film props, restorations, and scale model artistry. Scott Alexander of Atomic City Models, specializing in 2001 A Space Odyssey model recreations and a few other notable genre pieces as well. Braddock 001, whether a one-to-one -one scale Borg sleep station, droids of any make or model, or even popular superhero armor or any kind of sculpture, look to Brad Carpenter to bring it. And for the trials, tribulations, and tales of my car Red 2 and its droid lemons, check in on Gears McTinkerson. Bad Grendel's for fine model work, timer chips, and electronics knowledge. The Model Man Tom channel would like to thank the following for their sponsorship. Elliot Brown of Kingston Vacuum Works, featuring Fedoratron.com and WarmPlastic.com. Lighting for extraordinary modelers and vacuum forming tables for designers, modelers, and engineers. Kingston Vacuum Works covers it all. Paul at thefiberopticstore.com, now presenting the beta version of its new site, thefiberopticprojects.com, for an exceptional selection and great prices of fiber optics of all sizes and quantities, thefiberopticstore.com. Carpenter Creations, if you can dream it, you can make it. Brad and Carpenter, science fiction artiste. From full scale board cubicles or droid displays of all kinds, Carpenter Creations. Steve Neal's Garage, props and models for motion picture and discerning collectors, as well as prosthetic makeup and CG. Contact Steve through stevenealsgarage.com. Model reviews from Round 2 Models AMT, MPC, Polar Lights, and Lindbergh. Scale Model Addict Magazine. Issue 3 now available. Issue number 4 is in the works. The Orbital Defense Engineering Commission, a 2001 A Space Odyssey specific forum for scale model kits, reviews, news, and discussion. Odec.proboards.com. More than just talk, hobbytalk.com. A forum for every hobby. And for the finest reference collection of feature film studio props and miniatures and models, it's Modelers Miniatures and Magic at ModelerMagic.com.